Today we're going to learn about measuring voltage and current in circuits. We're going to build this circuit on a breadboard, and then we're going to use the digital multimeter to measure the voltage and the current in this circuit. So let's get started. I'm going to use the N-scope board to provide power for this circuit. This N-scope is already plugged into the computer, so you can see that the ground lights are lit up, but the plus and minus 5 volt lights are not turned on. In order to get those turned on, I push this power button and then they turn on. But sometimes it's actually a good idea to leave the power off while you're constructing the circuit. So I'm going to push the power button again and turn it off for now. This paper shows a connection from the positive side of the 5 volt supply to one end of the resistor, and then from the other end of the resistor to the ground of the power supply. So let's make those connections. I'm going to use this resistor in this demonstration. This is a 10 kilo ohm resistor. And I'm going to bend the leads a little bit so that it's easier to push them into the breadboard. So one side of the resistor connects to the positive 5 volt supply. So that is this supply down here. So I'm just going to push the end of the resistor into this long row down here that's connected to the 5 volt supply. And then I'm going to push the other leg into one of these holes in the breadboard, in the middle of the breadboard. And then I have to make a connection from the other end of the resistor to ground. So I'm going to use this wire here, and I'm going to connect the resistor to ground. So I'm going to do that by pushing one end of the wire into the same row as the resistor, and then I'm going to push the other end of the wire into this ground row up here. Now, both the top and the bottom rows of the breadboard are connected to ground. So I could have used either one of those, but this just happened to be convenient, so I chose this one. So now I have created the circuit, and I can turn on the power. And now I can use the digital multimeter to make some measurements. This is the digital multimeter that I'm going to be using, and there are a few things that I want to point out. First of all, the first thing that we have to do before we use the multimeter is that we have to connect the leads to the meter. These are the leads that I'm going to be using and we need to attach them to the meter. I'm going to attach the black lead first, because the black lead always goes into the port that's marked COM for common. So I'm going to push the black lead into that port. That's set up now. And then next, I'm going to attach my red lead. You'll notice that there are two ports remaining here where I could attach my red lead. And I have to choose which port I'm going to use based on which type of measurement I'm going to make. I'm going to start off by making a voltage measurement, so I'm going to use this port in the middle, which is labeled V for voltage. I'm going to attach the red lead to that port by pushing it into that port. Right. The next thing that I have to do is I have to choose the type of measurement that I'm going to make by using this dial. So I have to put the dial in the correct position for making a measurement. So there are different, different sections of the meter that correspond to different types of measurements. So I want to measure voltage, so I'm going to come over here to this portion that says DCV 
for DC voltage. Okay, um, and then each position in the meter in, in this section corresponds to the maximum voltage measurement that can be made in that setting. So down here it says 200 milli for 200 millivolts. So if I wanted to measure something up to 200 millivolts, I would turn the dial into that position. Up here is 2000 milli, so I could measure up to 2000 millivolts or two volts in that position. And then the next position is 20 for 20 volts. So I could measure up to 20 volts in that position. So I wanna choose the position that I think will work best. So I'm gonna choose 20 for now, 20 volts. And then I have to turn the meter on. So I'm gonna move the switch over to the on position. Now right now the meter is not connected to anything, so it's measuring zero volts. So now I have to actually touch the leads to the circuit in order to measure voltage. So let's do that. Now remember, voltage is always a difference between two points. So in order to measure voltage, you have to connect your leads to two points on the circuit. I want to measure the voltage across the resistor in this case, so I'm just going to touch my leads to the two ends of the resistor. So I'm going to touch one lead to one end of the resistor and the other lead to the other end of the resistor. And I'm going to try and hold the leads there and look at the meter. So when I do that, the voltage comes out to be 5.02 volts. Now you'll notice that there's actually a minus sign in front of there. So it's saying it's minus 5.02 volts. That just has to do with the, the way that I have attached the probes. I attached the black lead to the higher voltage and the red lead to the lower voltage. So if I switch these around, that will actually shows me the same voltage, but now the minus sign is gone. So if you see a minus sign, you don't really have to worry about it. It's just telling you which direction you've connected your probes. All right. So that's how I can measure the voltage across this resistor. I just touch the probes to the two ends of the resistor, and that tells me the voltage that I have. We didn't have to take anything apart to do this measurement, so voltage measurements are called non-destructive measurements. Okay. Now I want to make a current measurement. In order to make a current measurement, I need to make sure that my meter leads are in the correct locations. So I'm going to check that. My black lead always stays in common, so that's good. And then my red lead is in this port, and that port is also it's labeled V, but it's also labeled MA for milliamps. So I know that if I want to measure current that is several milliamps, I can leave the red lead in this port. Some meters will have a separate port for measuring current, so you might have to move that around. This meter has a separate port for measuring large currents, so if I wanted to measure up to 5 amps, I would have to move the lead over to this port. But for measuring small currents, like I expect to have here, I will leave the red lead in this port. Okay? All right. So now I have to connect the leads of my meter to my circuit. And remember, current measurements are made at one point in your circuit. You need to measure the, the current at one particular point. I want to measure the current flowing through this resistor. So what I want to do is I want to measure the current either right before or right after the resistor. And in order to do that, I actually have to break the circuit apart. 
and make the current flow through my meter in order to make the measurement. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to partially deconstruct this circuit by pulling out one leg of this resistor. Now what this has done is this has created two loose ends of this circuit, and I need to connect those two loose ends of the circuit to the two leads of my meter. One loose end is pretty easy to see. It's this leg of the resistor that's hanging out in space there. So that's one loose end. The other end might not be as easy to recognize, but the other end, the other loose end that I've just created is the spot where that resistor used to be attached. So this little spot in the breadboard is now a loose end of the circuit. And I need to connect my other lead of my meter to that loose end. The way that I'm going to do that is I'm going to use another jumper wire and plug it right into that spot where the resistor used to be attached. Now I've plugged a separate jumper wire into that spot where the resistor used to be attached. Now it's easy to see the two loose ends of my circuit, the end of the resistor and the end of that jumper wire. So I'm going to touch the leads of my meter to those two loose ends of my circuit. The other thing that I have to do is I have to put the meter into current measuring mode. So the way that I do that is I turn this dial into the current section, which is over here where it says DCA for DC amps. So I'm going to turn this over here. Now I'm going to touch one lead of my meter to one of the wires, the other lead of the meter to the resistor, and then I'm going to check the amount of current. Right now, I don't see any current flowing, but you'll notice that I have the meter up here in the largest current measuring section. So this is measuring up to 200 milliamps right here. Sometimes when you measure large amounts of, or when you're able to measure large amounts of current, you sacrifice the ability to see smaller amounts. So since I don't see any reading here, I'm actually going to turn this meter, this dial, into a lower setting until I start to see something. So now I'm seeing um, minus uh, 49 or 50 um, microamps. Now I'm reading um, minus 49.6 microamps. So you, you might have noticed that as I turn that dial down to the lower settings, I got more and more precise readings. So this is what you want. You want to turn that dial into the lowest possible setting that you can in order to get the most precise reading that you can. So now I'm seeing 50.2 microamps, and that is what I would expect with a 5.02 volt power supply and a 10 thousand ohm resistor. So that's making a pretty good uh, measurement. Again, you can see that there's a negative sign in front of the current measurement, and that just has to do with the order that I, or with the, the direction of the current flow. So if I swap the two leads around, that negative would go away. You really don't have to pay attention to the negative sign at this point. All you really care about is the, the amount of current that is flowing. And when I'm done making a measurement, I always put the circuit back the way that I found it before I start to make my next measurement. So I remove that extra jumper wire and I plug my resistor 
back in to this hole. And now the circuit is back together and I can make another measurement. If I had another resistor that I wanted to measure, I would now proceed to start measuring the voltage and current for that resistor. The reason that I put things back together before I make other measurements is because if you don't put things back together, it's easy to get confused about what's going on. Um, it's easy to forget what's supposed to go where, and um, if things are not in the right place when measurements are made, then the measurements will not come out correctly. So, um, so it's always a good idea to put things back together before you make other measurements. So that's a little bit about how to measure voltage and current in a circuit. Remember, voltage is a non-destructive measurement, so you just touch the leads to the two sides of the component that, where you want to measure the voltage. But current measurements are destructive measurements. You have to partially deconstruct the circuit by taking it apart and looking at the two loose ends and then connecting those two loose ends to your meter in order to make current measurements. So I hope you learned a little bit about making voltage and current measurements, and I'll talk to you next time.